Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, welcome everybody. And it's a pleasure to introduce Carolina Araujo from IMPA, um, who will talk about higher, uh, higher funny, uh, FANO manifolds. <laughs> OK. Gracias, All right, Carolina. Muchas gracias, Fernando. Eh, ¿Me pueden oír? ¿Está bien? ¿Está bien? Sí, sí. Ok, so first of all, I would like to, to thank the, the organizers for, uh, for the invitation to give this lecture. And today I will talk about higher funnel manifolds. So I will introduce um, funnel manifolds first from a historical uh, point of view. And then I will discuss some uh, recent uh, research about um, the higher condition for funnel manifolds. Okay, so let me start by giving you the setup. So we will be working uh, with a complex projective manifold X, and we are going to look at its tangent bundle. So the tangent bundle of X is just can be assembled by looking at all the tangent spaces at all points of, uh, of X at the same time. And now once we have the, uh, any vector bundle, we can look at its churn characters in particular, we can look at its first churn class. And this is what we call the anti-canonical class of the, the complex uh, projective manifold X. And this is as an element in the second cohomology group of X. So that means that if you give me any curve C that is contained in X, I can intersect it with the anti-canonical class. And this is going to give me a number, an integer. And this number, measures the, the average of the Ricci curvature of the complex projective manifold X along C. So this gives us, this number gives us an information about the curvature, the geometry of X. Okay, so now let me explain the, the traditional, the usual, the classical funnel condition. So again, we are working with a complex projective manifold X. We look at its tangent bundle and its first churn class. And then we say that X is a funnel manifold if, the, uh, if this anti-canonical class is ample, it's positive. In other words, well, you can think of this condition as saying that if you intersect it with any curve C, then this gives me a positive integer. And let me recall that this number, uh, precisely this intersection number measures the, the curvature of X um, along C. So for instance, when C is, uh, has complex dimension one, so that is a smooth projective curve, then this is just a Riemann surface. And the anti-canonical class measures only, just is measuring the, the genus, roughly speaking, the genus of the Riemann surface. So the, the funnel condition positive um, anti-canonical class corresponds precisely to the case when the genus is zero, or in other words, when, where we are um, over the complex line. Okay, so now in higher dimensions, um, the, in general, the, the, the sign of the canonical class is not well defined. So if I intersect it with different curves C, it may give me positive zero or negative numbers. But for some classes of, uh, for some varieties, this, uh, this number is uh, the sign well defined. For instance, this is the case of a complex projective space or we are going to look at some um, more examples uh, soon, but hypersurfaces of small degree in projective space. Also an important class of fundamentals is that of homogeneous spaces. We are going to be uh, looking at those more carefully later on. And just another uh, class of examples are several uh, modelized spaces, for instance, modelized spaces of vector bundles. So just a remark that, as I said, in general, the sign of the um, anti-canonical class is not well-defined. Uh, but after the minimal model program, what we know is that every projective manifold can be built up from varieties uh, for which the sign of the canonical class is, uh, is determined. So in particular, either it's a funnel manifold uh, or it has a zero anti-canonical class or negative anti-canonical class. Okay, so what are the special properties of funnel manifolds? Let me describe the case for smooth hypersurfaces. Here, we already see some fundamental properties of funnel varieties that appear in a very clear way. So for a smooth hypersurface, 
A smooth hypersurfaces are the simplest uh, projective variety that we study in algebraic geometry. So they are defined, they can be defined by a single polynomial equation of degree D. So basically all the geometric information is encoded in this, in, in this polynomial. And in this case here, the anti-canonical class is easy to, uh, to compute. So this is a multiple of a hyperplane section and this multiple here is exactly what tells you the funnel condition. So in this case, we see that, at, that the hypersurface of degree D in Pn is funnel, if and only if the degree D is less or equal than N. And now in this case, this, uh, these varieties are very easy to understand because they are given by only one equation. And so for instance, if the degree is less or equal than N minus one, then you can just, uh, this is an easy exerc an exercise, you can compute that X is covered by lines. So basically you, for any point on your projective variety, you write down the equation of a generic line, you plug it in the equation of the hypersurface, and then you can check that you can always find a solution. So it's always covered by lines for low degree. Now in the next degree, so this is still a funnel manifold, but it's no longer covered by lines. But again, one can check that it's still covered by conics. So in either case, what we see is that the, the funnel hypersurfaces, they're always covered by rational curves. On the other hand, for a higher degree, for degree at least n plus one, then there is no rational curve through a general point of x. So this is a geometric condition that, uh, that uh, distinguishes uh, funnel manifolds um, among hypersurfaces. So the conclusion for this uh, simple example is that the condition that X is a uh, funnel manifold is equivalent for the, for the degree being less or equal than N, which is equivalent to this geometric condition of the hypersurface being covered by rational curves. So this is a very, um, this, is a, this is a general property of funnel manifolds. So in Mori proved in 1979 that any funnel manifold is covered by rational curves. And even more is true. So this has been proved later by Kampana and Kolarmia Okamori that funnel manifolds are in fact rationally connected. So that means that given any two points of X, we can always find a rational curve connecting X and Y. Uh, on, in, in contrast, projective manifolds for which the anti-canonical class is less or equal than zero, then they, they, those do not contain any rational curve through a general point. So again, being covered or containing many rational curves is a distinguished property of funnel manifolds. Okay, so let me now discuss another special property of funnel manifolds. And this uh, has to do with what is today known as the sense theorem. So Tsen's theorem says the following. Given any complex algebraic curve B and any family of hypersurfaces of degree D in Pn, then if the degree of the hypersurfaces is less or equal than N, then pi admits a holomorphic section. So not... <clears throat> So this, this again, this is a, so this is a property of uh, hypersurfaces of low degree, which actually can be generalized for funnel manifolds in, in general, or more even more for uh, rationally connected uh, varieties. So this is a very important theorem of Graeber, Harris, and Starr. They prove the following generalization of sense theorem. They prove that if uh, if you have a complex algebraic curve B and any family of rationally connected varieties over B then pi admits a holomorphic section. And now I would like to discuss a generalization of this theorem for higher dimensional uh, bases. So now let's work over a complex algebraic variety B. It may be now of higher dimension and let me denote its dimension by K. Then send, uh, the generalization by Lang of Tsen's theorem says the following. If I have a family of hypersurfaces of degree D in Pn, and if the condition, if the degree of the hypersurfaces satisfy D to the K less or equal than N, then again, this family of hypersurfaces ad admits a meromorphic section. So this is a, when we work over higher dimensional uh, bases, 
And now I would like to pose the following problem for that, that I would like to answer in general for funnel manifolds. I would like to find some intrinsic geometric conditions FK. So this F stands for, for higher funnel. So F conditions FK such that for hypersurfaces of degree D in projective space, this uh, higher funnel condition FK should be equivalent to saying that the D to the K is less or equal than N meaning this is just the same thing as that appears in the tseng lang theorem. But I want this condition, so I want to replace my, the condition on tseng lang theorem by this condition Fk. So in particular, I expect, I will expect that projective manifolds satisfying these conditions Fk, they should be covered by rational k folds. And we would like that tseng lang theorem holds if the fibers of pi satisfy the condition Fk. Now, in algebraic geometry, we have to take this problem modulo Brouwer obstruction. So this is something that I would not discuss, I will not discuss in this talk, but this is something that we have to look at if we want to find sections more generally. So for instance, for the, so I want to solve this problem for any K. And what we have seen earlier is that we can take the condition F1 to be, to be funnel, or more generally, if you want to be um, very complete, to be rationally connected. So we would like to find higher funnel conditions to set with these properties, these conditions Fk. And this is now what I want to look, and this is the, this is the motivation for introducing what we call higher funnel conditions. So let me define, let me introduce these higher funnel conditions. Again, uh, we are going to be working with a complex projective manifold X, and I will now look again at the tangent bundle of X. And now instead of looking at just the first churn class, I will look at all the churn characters of, of this tangent bundle. So we usually, usually denote this by uh, CHK of the tangent bundle. So again, this is an element in the, in the, in the cohomology group of order 2K. And uh, so for instance, so what does this, what this, uh, what this, this class measures? If we, have, if we start with a vector bundle, which is a direct sum of line bundles, then the K churn character is just can be computed as the product of the churn, the K, the first churn classes of the um, of the factors. So this is how it uh, how it gets measured in general. And we say that a uh, man, a manifold X is a K funnel if all the churn characters from one to K are positive. That means if when I intersect it with a k-dimensional cycle z, then I get something, uh, something positive. So for, for instance, let me give you an, an easy example of uh, k-funnel manifolds. If I take a smooth hypersurface of degree d in projective space Pn, then the k-funnel condition is equivalent to saying that d to the k is less or equal than n. So again, this is exactly the condition that appears in a uh, sang lang theorem. Okay, so now before um, I describe the geometry of, K of higher funnel manifolds, let, let us take a break from algebraic geometry and let's get some inspiration from, uh, from topology. So let's look at the, at the equivalent problem that we are looking in algebraic geometry in topology. So suppose that we have a fibration, so pi from X to B, a fibration of CW complexes with typical fiber F. And let's denote the dimension of the base B by K. So we would like in topology, we want to find conditions on the fiber, on the topology of the uh, typical fiber F uh, for, this, for the existence of a section. And, and the answer to this problem is, uh, is very well known. The answer is the following. If the fiber F is K minus one connected, then the fibration pi admits a section. Let me uh, remind you what uh, the notion of connectedness from topology. So in general, if you take any topological space F and you take a point in P, we can look at it, the loop space. So this is the space at loop space at the point P. And this has the structure of a uh, topological space with the compact open topology. And then we can define the, uh, the kth uh, homotopy 
group of F to be by recursion, the uh, K minus one homotopy group of this loop space. So this is how we define the higher homotopy groups. And we say that F is K connected if all these homotopy groups since zero, since K equals zero, so from zero, meaning the fundamental group up to K are zero. So for instance, in this case, zero connected is just the same thing as being a path connected. One connected means the same thing as uh, I have a path, uh, um, a path connected F, which, uh, which is itself um, simply connected. Okay, and now if we want to go from topology to algebraic geometry, this is uh, how we can, we can create this uh, a dictionary that goes as, as follows. So whenever we see a topological space F, you replace it with a projective variety X. And now, and whenever you see an, an open, uh, a closed interval, zero, one, you uh, replace it with a rational curve uh, CP1. And so what does it mean? Uh, so this, is the, this was the case K equals one. So what does it mean to say that F is path connected in algebraic geometry? Well, this says this, this is saying that X is rationally connected. So any two points can be connected by a, uh, by a rational curve. Now let's look at the, the condition the, 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 um, the condition of being simply connected. So what does it mean for a F to be simply connected in terms in algebraic geometry terms? So path connect, again, simply connected means path connected and the loop space is path connected. In algebraic geometry, this would say that X, the projective variety is uh, rationally connected, and now we have to uh, well now we have to say to look at to look at this uh, loop space. So let's look at this. What does that mean? So that stands for. So in algebraic geometry, this is how we look at this loop space. Uh, we 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 have a point at point x, and then we look at all the rational curves of minimal degree passing through x. So for instance, if we are if we're in the case of P n, then this would be just the lines through a point. And now the condition that, uh, that we ask is that X is rationally connected and the space of rational curves of minimal degree through X is itself rationally connected. So is this a good notion? And would this give us the answer to our problem? Um, so let me just tell you before, um, before, you, before I, I say more about, um, about simply connectedness, let me just point out a limitation of this uh, dictionary, of this analogy. When you prove the, the, this result in topology, uh, one, uh, so one th something that one, you, you uh, easily see is that if you look at the loop spaces, and if you look at, for instance, at spaces of paths uh, pass through two points P and Q, uh, these spaces are homotopy equivalent. And this is very much used in, in topology. While in algebraic geometry, um, we do not have this. This is in general not true. So we don't yet, we have some relations, but we do not know in general how to compare spaces of rational curves of minimal degree through a point with spaces of rational curves of minimal degree through more than through, through two points, say. In any case, um, this, uh, this uh, based and from based on this uh, this analogy, De Jong and Starr have introduced this notion of rationally simply connectedness. And so they say a, a complex projective manifold is rationally simply connected. Well, if X and H sub X are rationally connected, so there any two points can be connected by a rational curve and the same is true to the space of rational curves of minimal degree through X. We also ask in general that some version of the space of rational curves of minimal degree to two points is rationally connected and some technical conditions. And what they propose, now we go back to our problem, we want to find a generalization of sang lang theorem, replacing the condition on the degree with some uh, intrinsic higher final condition Fk. They propose that we could take F2 to be X is rationally simply connectedness. So they, um, so they have investigated this condition. And on the other hand now, uh, and this is why I introduced this uh, higher funnel manifolds, we say that X is K funnel if all the positive churn characters are 
positive for i from, from 1 to k. And, uh, and when Ana Maria Castravet and myself introduced this, uh, this higher funnel uh, manifolds, we asked whether we can take this condition fk to be x is k funnel. And so this is, uh, this is what we started to, to, to look at back then. And so let me just uh, describe um, what we have uh, some, some properties of, of such higher funnel manifolds. So if I start with a funnel manifold, let me always fix a general point X and uh, I fix the family of rational curves of minimal degree through X. So the first thing that we did is we were able to compute all the, the Schoen characters of the space of rational curves H sub X uh, using the churn characters of X and, and some, some polarization on L. So this, the, the formula itself is not so important, but let me just uh, explain some consequences of this formula. So for instance, if X is true funnel, so if it's first and second churn characters are positive, then the space of rational curves of minimal degree through, through X is it's, it's itself funnel. And the same thing if X is three funnel, then the uh, H sub X is two funnel. And so in this way, we were able to, um, to unveil this inductive structure on higher funnel manifolds. And so this strategy has been uh, carried out. And so very recently, uh, we have the following results by Suzuki and Nagaoka. They consider higher fun K funnel manifolds so if they, they show that if X is K funnel, and if the dimension of the spaces of rational curve of minimal degree uh, is big enough, then they started to look at the rational curves of minimal, of minimal degree on rational curves of minimal degree on rational curves of minimal degree and so on. So they started looking at this inductively and they showed that they can do it K times and still get, get this is, that this is funnel. So in particular, they use this property to show that uh, if X is K funnel, and well, with some, uh, some uh, extra conditions, then it's always, X is always covered by rational K folds. So this was one of the, one, this was part of the problem that we are interested in. So this is actually gives us some, um, some, some very good news that this, uh, so this is approach is, uh, has been working. And, uh, and, and now let me change gears a little bit and, and instead uh, talk about some limitations of this, uh, of this notion. So, so these are some, so let's look at examples. So now, um, now that I described some, some properties of um, two funnel manifolds, let me discuss, uh, let me take a step back and discuss some examples. So the first easy example to construct is, uh, is a generalization of hypersurfaces. So in general, if I take complete intersections of low degree in weighted projective space, then I get examples of funnel manifolds. And for hypersurfaces in Pn, the numerical condition that we want is that D square is less or equal than N. But we can, uh, in general, look at uh, complete intersections in weighted projective space and have a similar uh, numerical condition. Okay, so, uh, so this complete intersections are uh, cheap examples, but let me discuss something more and another important source of uh, examples of uh, true funnel manifolds, which are homogeneous spaces. So a homogeneous uh, space is a, an algebraic uh, uh, projective variety uh, with, uh, that has a, a transitive group of automorphism acting on it. So if you have any projective, uh, homogeneous projective uh, manifold, then uh, it, uh, it can be written as a product of, uh, of, an, of its Albanese variety. So this is an abelian variety. So this has a, a zero um, anti-canonical class uh, times uh, a part that is a funnel. So this X prime is a funnel, a funnel manifold. Uh, on the other hand, this funnel part can be decomposed as a product of, uh, of um, varieties of the form GI, GIPI. So GI is a, here is, al is a simple algebraic group and PI is a parabolic uh, group. Uh, 
So these varieties can be, these uh, this, um, homogeneous varieties, they can be studied from uh, with using tools from a representation theorem. And so, for instance, uh, when we take this PI to be a maximal uh, parabolic group, then, uh, then we get some, some special uh, funnel manifolds with Picard number one that they are, they are parameterized by what we call this uh, Dinkin diagram. So I'm just, uh, just going to briefly um, tell you something about those. So, this, uh, so the, you have this Dinkin diagrams. Um, and so for each, uh, for each diagram and each vertex is, um, gives you a, a choice of a simple algebraic group and a parabolic group. So this, with this, we can look at all these homogeneous manifolds. And, and recently we have uh, started doing a search, like aiming at finding more examples of uh, true funnel manifolds. We have um, done a complete classification of homogeneous true funnel manifolds. So this is a, um, a joint work with um, several people. Uh, Roya Beresti, Ana Maria Kastravets, Kelly Jabush, Svetlana Makarova, Enrique Amazon, Libby Taylor, and Nivedita Visvanathan. So we have uh, we we went through the list of uh, of uh, homogeneous manifolds and we found exactly those that are um, true funnel. So in particular, we have more now more examples of um, true funnel manifolds. On the other hand, if we if you want to ask which of one which one of those are give you example of three funnels, then actually we get very few examples. So, um, so again, if you want to find examples of three funnel manifolds, these are funnel manifolds with first, second, and, and third uh, turn characters positive, then you only we only have complete intersections of low degree in weighted projective space. Again, for hypersurfaces. The condition would be t cubed uh, less or equal than n, but we have a similar condition for um, uh, for for arbitrary um, um, complete intersections. And the only homogeneous spaces that are three funnel are the projective space CPN and the quadric hypersurface. So, and in particular, they are themselves uh, complete intersections in um, in, in, in weighted projective spaces. And so what this shows us is that we have, even though you know, this, is, this, this condition uh, looks very interesting from the point of view of the of, of, um, Sang-Lang theorem and its generalizations, this seems to be a very restrictive condition. And now it is still uh, an, an open problem to find examples of three funnel manifolds other than complete intersections in weighted projective space. And so, uh, and and so, we, yeah, so actually, this is this gives showing a, that we we are changing a little bit the uh, direction of uh, research uh, for this project, and now we believe that this higher funnel uh, conditions they are um, they they impose some very strong restrictions on on X. So, this is, for instance, we conjecture that if you have a funnel manifold X. Uh, with say dimension n, if it is k funnel for k something to the order of uh, log uh, log n plus one base two, then this should be a projective space. And in 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 more generally, uh, this is a, a, a pro an, another problem. If you fix the dimension of the manifold n then uh, we would like to find a smallest possible integer k such that if x is k funnel of dimension n, then it, it's automatically a complete intersection in a weighted projective space. So for instance, if I take, uh, so if I, for instance, if I want, I, if I want to find a condition, look at the condition of the three funnel, then uh, we already, in this case, we do not know uh, what would be the, um, the smallest value um, in this case. So here, what I'm saying is that still uh, for, for k equals to three, uh, it is still possible that just taking, um, um, that all that all the examples that we know are weighted complete intersections, um, are complete intersections in weighted projective space. 
Okay, so this is what I wanted to tell you about uh, higher funnel manifolds. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello. 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 Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. Thank you, Carolina, for a for a fantastic talk. Very nice. Um, are, are there any questions or comments? <laughs> 